our guest tonight is GFW star Taya Valkyrie. How you doing? Hello, I'm very, very well, thank you. And you? Um, I cannot <laughs> complain. We got Taya on the show. I'm so excited. Now, I, I've heard you talk uh, to several people, including Jericho, about this. Uh, and we've had some inner monologue about this on the show as well. Taya, Taya, uh, we've called you both. Uh, I hear the people in Mexico also call you both. What do you prefer? Um, well, I originally it was Taya. And then when I went to Mexico, uh, first off, they, couldn't, they kept saying Taya, and I tried to fight it. <laughs> And after a while, Paraguay was like, Paraguay was like, just, just let it go. <laughs> Tie it forever. And just then, move uh, on. <laughs> yeah, and then they they dropped the Valkyrie while I was down there because obviously the V's and B's are pronounced differently in Spanish, so they kept referring to me as Valkyrie the whole time I was there. <laughs> Yeah, so, so we, it's nice that I got my last name back now. <laughs> yes, we had we had Rob Van Dam, we had uh, Alberto Del Rio at one point. He kept calling Rob Van Dam, Rob Van Dam, and we're like, "Who the hell are you talking R- about?" RBD. RBD. I was like, yeah, "No, no, no." It's, I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> well, we won't do that." Uh, okay, well, on September seventh episode of Impact Wrestling, you made your GFW debut with a grand entrance and an attack on Rosemary. What ultimately yes. went into your decision to sign with GFW, and what was the signing process like? I've been wanting to, I mean, I'm constantly trying to expand, you know, where I'm wrestling, who I'm wrestling and from, and as well, like, looking for the best female wrestlers everywhere, you know what I mean? Um, and Karen and Jeff had known me for, over, you know, five years. They would come down to Mexico and work for AAA all the time, and Karen and I would laugh, and she would always, about, you know, me coming to work with her and do projects with her and stuff, but I just couldn't. And so, I mean, it was really an exciting you know, thing to be asked to be part of it. And I'm just really happy and excited to see what happens. Um, and it's a different opportunity, you know. It's a totally different demographic than the Lucha Libre crowd. And I get to wrestle some girls that I've never worked with before. And it's a new challenge for me. So I'm very excited. Mike Keore, next question. Uh, well, you and Johnny have worked great together in Lucha Underground as part of Worldwide Underground. And now that you're both uh-huh. in GFW, I think that there's inevitably going to be some questions about um, whether or not you guys are going to team up there as well. Um, so for you, mm-hmm. what, what's your personal preference between either keeping that alliance alive in GFW or both of you just kind of doing your own thing there? You know, like throughout my entire career, I've always been part of factions and stuff. For example, like so I was Paris Del Mal. In Lee Chenna Down, I'm part of the Worldwide Underground. And this opportunity in GFW allows me to stand up by my, on my own. You know what I mean? Like, it's, uh, it's, it's exciting because it's something I haven't done before. And I, I think, you know, you never know what the future will hold. I'm so happy with the way that Johnny Impact is doing, you know, in GFW and what he's doing on, on his end. But I'm very also excited to be kind of, you know, showing, like, that I can be on my own and, and hold my own by myself. So it's, it's different and it's challenging. You never know what the future will hold and see what will go on um, as far as John and I working as, you know, a group or as a pair together. But for now, I'm really excited to just tie about me and proving that I can do it by myself. Bernie Galvin? Well, your GFW debut featured an incredible entrance. So what went into setting that up and what type of creative input do you currently have or think you'll have moving forward at GFW? Well, Taya as a character has just, you know, I just find her to be like an other side of myself. You know what I mean? And it's really cool to now have Taya Valkyrie and GFW be so different than Taya that you see on Lucha Underground every week. So, you know, like the, I was the longest reigning, Reina de Reina's champion, which is where the queen stuff comes from, because obviously Reina de Reina means queen of queens so um and I've, i'm a norwegian background i think that the tie of that you're seeing now is just like this dominant force goddess queen you know bitch if you want to put it in the other words <laughs> that is just coming to to dominate you know what i mean so creatively i i always come with my own ideas and everyone's been super open to you know the way i uh my ideas and everything that i've come up with so far so hopefully it keeps going that way you enter a GFW women's division stacked with stars like Gail Kim, Rosemary, Sienna, Allie, and more. You talked about how you want to face some of these women you never faced before. Who are you most looking forward to squaring off against, and what are your ultimate goals now that you're in GFW? Obviously, like, my ultimate goal is to be the knockout champion. I mean, who doesn't want that? Do you know what I mean? So right now I'm just going to pick them off one by one. 
<laughs> and uh, and prove why I'm there and prove my worth and prove and demonstrate to and show everybody the American public and and on the world stage, which is the stage of GFW Impact, that I deserve to be there and why I am the longest reigning Queen of Queens champion, why I was given all these opportunities and, and show the knowledge that I've gained through through the wrestling career that I've had. Mike Yari? There's uh, been so much buzz surrounding women's wrestling in recent years, and one thing that really seems to be taking the wrestling world by storm right now uh, is the Mae Young Classic. Um, for your, for you, what, what are the impressions that you have of that tournament, uh, if you've been following it at all, and, and what kind of impact do you think that that could potentially have on women's wrestling globally? Well, I was actually at the final last night <laughs> here in Las Vegas. I'm in Vegas right now. Um, so, I mean, any anything that promotes women's wrestling to me, I think, is a positive thing. And I know so many girls and women that were, sorry, women that were in the tournament um, who are friends of mine, who I've, you know, followed their careers. And so for me, I'm just so proud of, like, being part of, like, like a part of this movement that's happening right now. And I, I do come from a different side of it. I'm coming from the Lucha Libre world and stuff. But um, I'm just really excited to see what happens and ha- and seeing that, you know, women are ma- – we, we main event now. You know what I mean? Like, we're not, we're not the arm candy. We're the ones – breaking down barriers, breaking the rules. And I think the main classic is just another part of that. And so, I mean, I'm just, I'm just happy that more eyeballs are, are, you know, more people are seeing what women's wrestling is and taking it seriously and not viewing us as a joke. Brandon Galvin. Well, GFW, WWE and Lucha Underground are really leading the charge for women's wrestling in the mainstream. What do you make of the way these companies promote their women wrestlers? And what do you think yourself and the other women need to do to receive more main event opportunities? I just think we need to just keep doing what we're doing and chipping away at it. You know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> so I think we're doing the right thing right now. And, and we're proving it in the ring every single time. And you're seeing it at, you know, different indie shows and, uh, and in, you know, in Lucha Underground, in Impact and everything that, and WWE that given the opportunity with the women they ha- that we all have on our different various rosters, we take it and we go with it. You know what I mean? And I'm just, I just think we just need to keep doing what we're doing, you know, working, training hard and, and making people, sh- you know, people that aren't believers, believers. So I slowly, but surely like we're proving it. So it, that's the most important thing to me. Well, changing gears a bit here, just a a teeny bit, one major topic of conversation in recent weeks has been the incident between Sexy Star and Rosemary. As a AAA veteran and someone who worked with both Sexy Star and Rosemary, what are your thoughts on the situation and how it was handled? Oh, well, (laughs) Um, I don't want to go too much into it because, honestly, I don't want to give more attention to something that uh, or someone that I believe doesn't require, doesn't need it. Um, Rosemary is the nicest, most professional woman ever, also fellow Canadian, obviously. Um, and I've had the privilege and the continue to have the privilege to work with her. I just was, I was so embarrassed and disappointed watching that match on a whole, not just the finish, but the whole thing. Um, because I consider myself, you know, the face of, as an international um, woman, I like the face of what women's wrestling is in, in AAA. And I don't know. I was just like so embarrassed. I, I think that that's basically all I can say about it because it just was so ridiculous to me, uncalled for, unprofessional. And I just, I was so disappointed and I continue to be disappointed about it, but I just feel like we all have to like, just be like, you know what, this happened this will never happen again. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I hope to God this never happens again. I experienced similar situations in my five years of, of being in AAA with different female wrestlers there and on the Indies throughout Mexico, because I am Canadian. I look different. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's crazy to me, but it still exists. And there's still people that, that just are, you know, out for themselves. So it is what it is. Um, I'm so happy that Rosemary is doing better and stuff because I can't wait to kick her ass. <laughs> Mike Gary. There uh, continues to be a a lot of interest and support for Lucha Underground, especially with Ultima Lucha coming up soon, but I think there might be some concern from fans about whether a fourth season is going to happen. Um, What what would you like to see happen with Lucha Underground moving forward, and also what's your expectation with regard to whether there's going to be a fourth season? 
Um, I mean, Lucha Underground changed my life. You know, I, I mentioned it in Jericho's podcast too. Like, it's where I, I finally branched out to wrestling in the States. It's where I met my fiance. It really changed my life. And so for me, obviously, I want to see season four. Uh, we have so much fun when we're filming and the creative team, all, the entire roster, we just create magic. You know what I mean? During those tapings. And ho- I mean, I just want to do it again. You know, <laughs> who doesn't? Um, so hopefully, you know, the fans keep watching it, keep supporting Lucha Underground and, uh, and let's hope to, hope to the Lucha gods that, uh, we get to do a season four so far. We don't know, really know what's going on exactly, but, um, I'm really, really positive that with something that is as special as Lucha Underground, we'll be able to do it again. Oh my God. I am do you, a, a sigh of relief from me over here. Cause I was like, I, I don't know if there's going to be a season four, but I, I hear a lot of people being very confident about it. So I'm, I got my fingers crossed yeah. with you. I am very confident. I honestly, I don't know. I, I still don't know, but um, I just have faith. Sure. <laughs> I always do. I mean, I try to look at the, the shiny side of the whole situation and, and try to find something good in it. Yeah. It sucks. We haven't filmed in like 15 months or something. Um, but I just love what I love creating that product. You know what I mean? And it's so different from GFW. It's so different from WWE. It's just, it's something, it's something new and exciting. And I get to, you know, now I get to be two characters. I'm, I'm, I am still under the name Ty, obviously, but I truly believe that Lucha and GFW are so different. And it's really cool for me to be part of both. So we'll see what happens moving forward. And hopefully season four happens sooner than later. Brandon Gavin, final question. What are some of the main differences you've noticed so far between GFW and other promotions that you've worked at? Well, I'm just, I've been this in GFW for like a second. So. <laughs> but um, honestly, it's just like such a really positive work environment. I felt like, I mean, Lucha also is just an incredibly positive work environment, but I had just felt like the entire women's locker room was just so cool and awesome and, and really invited me in with open arms, you know what I mean? And I think that that speaks volumes for the entire roster and also the, 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 the team behind the scenes, you know what I mean? So not saying that other places aren't like that, but it was really, really cool to walk into a room, you know, walk into a locker room of women that have been around for a while and, and you know, be the new girl. And everyone was just so sweet to me. So um, I can't wait to keep doing that. Well, a huge thank you to our guest tonight, Taya Valkyrie. Catch her stealing the show every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Impact Wrestling on Pop TV. Tell the fans where else they can support you. Yes, everyone, please. Impact on Pop. Keep watching. Um, there's so much more coming from a La Huera Loca. Um, so you can find me on Facebook, facebook.com slash Taya Valkyrie, as well as on Instagram and Twitter, the Taya Valkyrie. Another huge thank you. Good luck moving forward. Thank you so much for having me, guys.